Hello and welcome to another lecture in the uh, ultrasound physics and instrumentation. And here we talk about the contrast enhanced harmonics, sometimes called contrast enhanced ultrasonography. To start with, we need to know that to have a contrast medium in the ultrasound is totally different from having an, a contrast medium in CAT scanning or X-ray or MRI or whatever. They are totally different, okay? Contrast medium in the ultrasound are non-radio-opaque. We need to memorize this, is non-radio-opaque because it has different components. What are the compositions of this uh, ultrasound medium, okay? Or contrast medium in the ultrasound? Number one is made of saline solution with loads of microbubbles. And these microbubbles each is formed of a shell and some gas inside. Okay, uh, this microbubble solution is given IV. Of course, they shake it first and then you give an IV. Okay, to visualize the, uh, the vascular or the cardiovascular or the cardiac chambers. Okay, sometimes it's ingested or swallowed to visualize the uh, stomach contains or some part of the GI tract. In the market, there are a lot of these microbubble solutions, but all of them, they should have the same criteria. What are these criteria of these microbubbles? Number one, the size should be of a size of a red blood cell or smaller. Somebody will ask why? Because as we all know that red blood cells are traveling in the capillaries and in the capillaries, red blood cells are allowed one by one, not a group one by one. Why? Because the size of the capillary or the diameter of the capillary in microns does not allow except one red blood cell at a time. So they go in a row. So imagine now that you have microbubbles are bigger than the red blood cell size. What happens? They will block these capillaries, right? So it's a, uh, it's a big uh, bad effect, right? So this first criteria. Second criteria, is they should be biochemically safe, metabolically safe. What does it mean? It means that they are not toxic, they don't have any harm to the body, uh, reactions or uh, bad effect even in the, in, the, in the further future. So they should be completely safe. Third thing, they should stay intact, not biodegradable, okay, for a while. So why do we have, to, we need to this, to need to have that? because we should have them available in the body, recirculate and recirculate and recirculate, okay? To have enough time to finish the exam because the exam might take some time. So they should be seeing long time enough to conclude the exam. Last but not the least, uh, they should be, uh, as we mentioned, they are biodegradable and we should know that the, biodegrad by the biodegradation products, they should be also safe. Okay, so metabolically safe for the material itself and the biodegradation uh, products. Okay, what happened now when I'm injecting this material, which is the solution with the microbubble, contrast medium, IV, okay? And exposed, these microbubbles are exposed to the ultrasound. So they will not do anything except, or they don't behave in the way to produce harmonics, except when they are exposed to the ultrasound beam. So ultrasound beam here, when they are hitting these microbubbles, each sound wave, we know that the sound wave has a compression and a rarefaction. So what happens now? The compression will make the, the microbubbles to shrink. And then the expansion, because I mean the rarefaction, because it's a lower uh, amplitude, I will, uh, I will get more dilation or more expansion. If we have this uh, ultrasound beam with a high amplitude enough, okay, I will get the expansion in what we call the nonlinear behavior. So nonlinear behavior of the expansion, this is the one that will create harmonics. So at a certain uh, intensity of the, of the ultrasound beam, I might get harmonics when you have enough expansion to be in nonlinear. Another technique or another uh, reaction that happened to these microbubbles is when they might get rupture. What happened here, if I'm having the, um, the amplitude of the ultrasound beam or the ultrasound waves are so intense, 
to the point that during rarefaction, these microbubbles may rupture, okay? And when they rupture, they produce more harmonics, okay? Again, rupture is a nonlinear behavior. A third method that these microbubbles may act, but this is the least of them, is we might have some strong scattering or echogenesis because these microbubbles are having some impedance mismatch between these microbubbles and the normal blood. So there is some sort of uh, excessive uh, impedance mismatch, and this might create some uh, more echogenesis of this fluid in the blood. But this is not the main action that we are requiring from these microbubbles. We need what? We need resonance, okay? We need this uh, resonance, and we need rupture, because these are the ones that produce strong harmonics, especially the rupture one. This is here some um, illustration of how this happened. This is here, the dotted one is the normal size of the, uh, of the microbubble. With compression, it shrinks. So there is some sort of shrinking because of the compression part, which is a high, um, high pressure. What happened next, if I'm having this rarefaction happen and this uh, compression and rarefaction is of a high limited, uh, of a high uh, amplitude, what happened? I will get expansion, but the expansion here will not go to the size of the, of the microbubble. No, it will exceed the size of the microbubble, and that's why we call here nonlinear expansion. So, this is the compressed part, okay, or the shrinked part. When it goes back, it doesn't go back to the normal size. No, it exceeds it out, and this is what we call nonlinear expansion, and this. It's called resonance, and the resonance is one of the mechanisms that produce harmonics. Why this? Uh, because of the nonlinear, of course, but by these microbubbles. Another technique, like I mentioned, when you have a rupture, okay? Again, with the compression, the, the microbubble shrinks, but with the rarefaction, because the, the amplitude is very high, so the rarefaction uh, amplitude is very high, I'm getting sudden drop of the energy, what happened to the microbubble here? It will rupture. So I will not get this microbubble here. It will be completely vanish. And this rupture is a very strong source of harmonics. To get deeper a little bit in the understanding of these microbubbles and their role in the harmonics production, we need to know something that this, because of the mechanical effect of these micro, of these uh, sound waves, I will get this harmonic. So mechanical action of the of the sound waves is related to what we call mechanical index. We know this. Mechanical index is one of the bioeffect measurements that I can use to 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 be safeguard against harmful bioeffects. So mechanical index here is relating the wave pressure to the linear or the nonlinear behavior of the microbubbles. So at a certain limit or a certain level of uh, uh, mechanical index, I might get sort of harmonics. So what are these measurements of the, micro, of the mechanical index that will help me to see harmonics or if not to see harmonics? So if I'm having a mechanical index of less than 0 0.1, again, it's a ratio, okay? So if I'm having a mechanical index of 0 0.1, okay, I will have no harmonics. I might get some uh, scattering effect. You know that they are the size of the red blood cells, right? And red blood cells are known of Rayleigh scattering. So I might get here some sort of Rayleigh scattering again, but it's not enough to produce harmonics. So this happened when, when I'm having 0 0.1 MI, MI 0 0.1, I will get no harmonics, but I might get some increased uh, scattering. Starting from 0.1 higher up to 1.0, then I will get here the, the second effect, which is the resonance. Resonance is again, as a source of harmonics. So I'm getting here certain harmonics when I'm going above 0 0.1. I'm talking about mechanical index. When I'm having mechanical index more than one, okay, this is the, the level I, when I will get rupture. And rupture is, rupture of these microbubbles is associated with strong harmonics. 
But rapture here, some people claim that if I'm exposing these micro bubbles to a lot of rapture, I might deplete them from the from the circulation. So it has some like sorts of we need to judge. Okay, when we reach by the mechanical index to this level, I might go in a in a, in a speedy uh, biodegradation of these micro bubbles when I'm having MI uh, more than one. But again, this is a strong source of harmonics. Now we come to the micro bubbles and their use in ultrasound fields. Okay, we have some clinical applications or sonography applications of these micro bubbles. We have what we call B mode sonography, and we know this. This is the grayscale. If I'm to, um, if I'm using these micro bubbles, what happened? Okay, it might help me to visualize the cardiac chambers in the B mode. Okay, so in the B mode, I can see the cavity of the of the chamber, left ventricle or right ventricle or atria. Okay, I might, I might see the, the chamber from inside if there's any filling defect or there's uh, uh, some sort of, of uh, septal uh, dyskinesia or whatever. All of this, I might get them uh, visualized better by the use of these micro bubbles. Uh, I might have also micro bubbles help me to visualize the lumen of the vascular system, especially if there is some synotic or uh, synosis, uh, I mean, as a pathology, or sometimes if there is any other pathology uh, that might be associated uh, with the vascular system, arteries, or veins, and the microbubbles here will help me to visualize them better. When you come to the tissues, the soft tissues, also microbubbles are very helpful, especially in applications for the liver pathologies, liver masses, okay, it's having uh, advanced applications nowadays, and you can see a lot of videos on this on the YouTube. They are having a lot of applications for uh, uh, use of ultrasound uh, micro bubbles in the uh, assessment of liver, um, liver masses. Like what? Like the hemangiomas, of course, they will get a lot of uh, uh, harmonics. Uh, focal nodal hyperplasia, FNH, of course. Uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, liver metastasis, all of these contrast harmonics uh, display the areas filled with contrast and not the surrounding structures. And there are phases, which is the filling phase and then the emptying phase. We can see this more details. The second application, when you have Doppler. So Doppler application is, are there uh, getting benefit from the uh, from the micro bubbles, contrast enhanced uh, harmonics. Yes, they are. When you when you use these harmonics, um, I will get more sharp uh, color Doppler images. Right? That it will ha enhance the uh, color Doppler because I'm having now more frequencies, more uh, more uh, reflections. I mean, okay, and this might bring more co color uh, visualization. Uh, the second thing also, it might help me to get better spectral Doppler waveform, and they will be more sharp, and especially if I'm having deeper structures, I might not be able to get sharp uh, uh, spectral waveform. Again, harmonics are very helpful on this uh, issue. Thank you, and I hope that was beneficial, and see you in the next video. Have a good day, everybody.